This is my final version of my transient generator. It has two BNCs on the side. This is the power source for it. It uses 12 volt DC. Plastic key here is used to enable it. The high voltage connector is the output. The box contains a small switching supply. It charges up a bank of capacitors. And once the capacitors are charged, capacitors are then discharged into a filter. Which then goes to the output. The output then just goes to a couple of B and C connectors, which would then go to the meter I plan on testing. So I have two scope probes here. This is my homemade scope probe. This is my Tektronix P6013A. I know I've done a few videos of this probe after I build it, but this will give you a side-by-side -side comparison between these two probes. So the output of the transient generator right now just ties to these two probes directly. This generator can put out quite a bit of power. Uh, you have to be pretty careful with it right now. Not very safe. You can see the wires dangling up here. If uh, you were to come in contact with this and it's live, that wire would certainly burn the skin tissue pretty much instantly. Uh, so you got to be pretty careful with this setup. It's only 2 kV, but uh, uh, this system will put out uh, several hundred amps. Um, I've designed it to handle about a thousand amps. Currently the two scope probes are just attached to my LaCroix. I just turn on the key here and it starts charging up and then it fires. So currently both channels are set for a thousand volts per division. see here two probes basically are right on top of each other pretty much what I'd expect uh, the other thing here you can also see we're at uh, 10 microseconds per division you can see it's about a 20 microsecond pulse 61010 specifies a 20 microsecond decay into a dead short uh, for an open, it specifies a 50 microsecond decay. So you can see here we're actually decaying quite a bit faster. You can also see I'm outputting about 2,000 volts. My plan with the generator is to test some uh, Cat3 meters that are rated for 600 volts. For Cat3, 600 it would be required that it handles 6 kV. So I'm nowhere near that limit. For Cat3, it's also for that transient specified as a, a 2 ohm source impedance. Uh, this generator is currently set for a 2 ohm source impedance. This is my Pearson current transformer. This is a model uh, 410. This is rated to do about 20 megahertz and about 5,000 amps peak. You can see it's uh, 0.1 volts per division. The output of this is just a BNC. It's going to a 50 ohm terminator and then into a 10x scope probe. So currently I just have the two outputs uh, strapped together going through the transformer. It's about as close as I'm going to get to a short for this test. I'll turn the generator on. So you can see the scope is set for uh, 50 volts per division or 500 amps per division. Currently I have the output of the generator attached to a spark plug same plug I used for a previous example <laughs> let's see here it's arcing down at the tip it's hard to get good connections around the plug hopefully it gives you some kind of idea how much energy we're looking at this is the B and K that I previously had burned up. I've zapped this meter quite a bit. You can see the damage that I see here. I ran this thing up to about 4 kV. Uh, it arcs everywhere. There's a breakdown point here. You can see this trace here for the 9 volt battery power. See how it snakes around? And then it gets very close to the current sense. That actually is the uh, 200 milliamp input that goes up to the fuse 
So when the fuse here opened up, uh, this starts to arc to the nearest point, which is that uh, nine volt trace here, and you can see the the damage that's done. Transient generator is now connected between the volts and the common, and you can hear the meter here breaking down. I'm not too surprised. I mean, it's it's done that all along. So I'm going to take our high voltage probe. And I'm just going to go to the input side of this. You can see here, here's the transient that we're applying. You can see the breakdown is right up in this area here. See on the back side of the board here, it's another area where this meter breaks down. I've never taken it apart, that's actually shining through the circuit board. And you know, again, yeah, that waveform is nothing. I'm just I'm surprised. So again, I mean even for this meter, this is a CAT2600 rated. I would have expected this meter would handle about a 4 kV hit, but uh, yeah, it can't. <laughs> you can see we're nowhere even near 4 kV. This is my very first uh, digital multimeter. This is the original manual for it. I damaged this meter twice since I've had it. This I see always seems to blow, or at least one of these two. I think it's the one with the yellow dot. I jammed the SOP amp in here, see if I could uh, figure out if it was just the IC that blew again, but apparently it was. So I never decided to fix it again. Cost to repair this meter is like 70 bucks or something just for the ICs. After I damage this thing, Originally, I ended up uh, buying this here HP meter. I've had this for quite a few years and never had any problems with it. Versus uh, this thing here. And I pretty much stayed with uh, HP for my bench meters ever since. I've got some sentimental attachment to it because I've saved it all these years. But uh, I think it's time to see if this thing will do anything with our transient generator. It's nice you can see here the fuse holder, it's kind of molded in place. It's got a nice cover, you can see all the specs here on the bottom side of it. Fairly expensive meter back in those days, you know. So let's uh, plug it in. mention when I run these tests I'm not going to use the AC outlet at all so let's just say we go to the milliamp side here ah we'll treat it nice <laughs> so right now it's set for 20 meg ohms and uh, uh, set it to one of the range selections let's just turn around So I just changed the uh, setting here to KO. <laughs> see if we can see what's breaking down here. Oh, <laughs> shit. Looks like some of the traces may be down here. Well, let's try her in the uh, milliamp side. I don't know what this thing was fused for. Uh, this is two amps. Let's just see what happens here. Huh. Could be a dozen amp fuse in it. 
we should check that first. <laughs> Looks like the fuse was burned out. Let's try a few more modes here. I don't know if you heard that, but it just blew something off. It hit the other side of the room. Wow. Something else just flew off. <laughs> Holy crap. Turn off the lights here. just spectacular explosions here on this thing. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> Impressive zaps. So anyway, so there's my 8000 series fluke. would say uh, this meter probably would not have passed cat 2 very expensive the plan now is just to order up some cat 3 meters low-end ones maybe in the $50 and under I might even buy a brand new fluke and uh, run it through the same test what I'm looking for is uh, any of the meters that would actually survive any of this testing what I'd like to do is run them through a real CAT 2 test. It might be interesting just to see if a CAT 3 meter on the low scale would actually pass uh, CAT 2 ratings. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe in the future here we can put this thing to some use. <laughs>